The top story for the Nigerian market in the economy is the signing uh, on Friday, President Buhari uh, administration has been receiving commendations since Friday when he signed a revised edition of the country's Companies and Allied Matters Bill 2020 into operation. This piece of legislation, which was the first introduced some three decades ago, speaks to the heart of corporate governance and practices in Nigeria. Joining me to shed more light on this is the special advisor to President Buhari on ease of doing business, as well as the head of the PEBEC Secretariat, Dr. Jumake Oduwale. Good evening, madam. Thanks for coming through. Good evening, Wilson. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Yes, so what are the key aspects of this uh, amended uh, CAM bill that are really innovative? Well, as you mentioned, it's been 30 years coming since 1990. Um, the government and stakeholders have been trying to work on this since 2004, and we're really glad that we finally got it done. Um, one of the key things that is really innovative, not so much globally, but definitely in our climb, is a single member, single shareholder company. So one person can incorporate their company and, and get on with it. We also have electronic filing, electronic share transfer, and e-meetings for private companies. Um, public companies aren't left behind. There's provision for virtual annual general meetings for public companies as well. So this makes it easier, faster, and cheaper to um, have business transactions. We also have the creation of limited liability partnerships and limited partnerships. This has been clamored for for quite a while. And um, so the, the business community is pretty excited to have it. And then we have the merger of incorporated trustees when they have similar objectives. So those are really the most innovative aspects of the, of the legislation. It's a gigantic, it's the largest um, piece of legislation that we have in the country. There are at least 15 intentionally put in business climate reforms into the provisions. So there you have it. Yes, uh, quite a very uh, a big uh, reform in there, and perhaps you may not know how really this goes down with when you talk about one-man business and cooperation in Nigeria. Again, people sometimes want to go into some business uh, and they just want to do it alone for startups and what have you. Some of them are young people, and with this yeah. legislation, they'll yeah. be able to do an incorporation just by their own name, this their own idea, is their own innovation of creativity, yes. and they'll be able to move on. This would actually actually go a very long way. Sometimes yeah. they go into partnerships and things don't really work out and great ideas sometimes find themselves in the water. But in terms of ease of doing business, what are the highlights of the revised bill that should meet private sector expectations? Yeah, so in addition to those uh, sort of innovative ones that we've put in, like virtual meetings and things that just make it very easy for businesses to go on, we've paid particular attention to smaller size companies, which had quite a bit of regulatory burden. So we've put a replacement of authorized share capital with minimum share capital. That means you only need to pay for the shares that you're actually taking up and using at that time. That was really wanted by the business community, so you don't have to tie down capital. We also have reduction of filing fees for registration of charges. I mean, that is a reduction of fees is always an exciting proposition for the private sector. But this one takes the filing fee charges to 0.35%, which will give us about a 65% reduction in the entire regime. We have the introduction of statement of compliance. We typically had in, in the former, in the Kama 1990, we had the declaration of compliance, which needed to be um, um, attested to by a legal practitioner. But with the statement of compliance, uh, the, the owner of the company, the promoters, can take an, and give an undertaking that all the registration requirements have been met and sign it off by themselves and, and submit that. And that will be deemed an alternative to the declaration of compliance, which must be signed by a legal practitioner and attested to before a notary public. So that makes things easier and cheaper to do business. The appointment of auditors has also been waived for smaller companies, as well as the appointment of company secretaries. So while your business is still very in its infancy stage and growing, you don't need to carry these regulatory burdens, especially if it's you're only like sort of reporting to yourself if you're a solo uh, man company. Now, the use of seals in our, in our corporate law has been, 
I mean, it's dormant all over the world. The best practice has moved away from, you know, the company seal, the need for that and need for that to be governed by the Articles of Association. So we've done away with that just to bring the legislation, tidy it up and bring it up to global best practice. So those are pretty much, um, there are lots of others, but these are the highlights that I know I that know. people are really I, I, I know, I, and, and I'm sure you've been getting feedbacks since this was signed on Friday. What feedbacks have you been getting, Dr. Oduwale? from the private sector? Well, before I go to the feedback, let me, let me, let me still tell you there's still some more. There's a transparency. There are a lot of I know, provisions I know, that would help with transparency. Yes, yes. So, yeah, but, but so I'm maybe, interested you know, in the feedback. Let's talk about the feedback first. I love the, I love the feedback. Ah, <laughs> it's been phenomenal. <laughs> to be honest, we are pretty delighted that we have been able to deliver this for, for the business community. Like I said earlier, it's been a long time coming, and I really want them to know what's in the bill. But we can't thank a variety of stakeholders enough. This is really a testament to government collaborating with private sector. Uh, I have to commend the 8th National Assembly and the 9th National Assembly. They really uh, worked very closely with the executive on this. Across the executive, of course, you have the, the anchor agency, the promoter, the Corporate Affairs Commission, but supported by a host of other agencies. You have, the, of course, Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, the Ministry of Justice, other regulators like the SEC, FIRS, and private sector. Private sector, really, the legal community, the business community, the capital markets. I could go on and on. I really could go on and on. This is a Nigerian bill. It's really a testament to what we can do when we join hands together to make it happen. Mm. NESG, I mean, organized private sector, Banwa Nigodalo uh, gave us a partner level resource completely through this process, embedded in our team. All sorts of, uh, you know. I, I know, just, I've seen, I've seen the, social and of the, uh, the social <laughs> media. The feedback. The social media since Friday. Start talking about it because yes. it's really. Yes, I think everyone is excited yeah. because I remember yeah. way back in 1990 yeah. when the first camera was, was enthroned. It was a major development in Nigeria's corporate history to have a, such a document. Mm. Now, it's been yeah. long where the economy has changed over time. The, the parameters have changed. We have a new economy and there are a lot of things we need to do away with. And now that we are trying to spur what you call innovation and creativity within the Nigerian space and try to do away with some of those uh, dross, as you call it, when you're trying to uh, refine a gold, as it were. But let's talk about transparency and accountability. And I have a special reason why I'm making that the last question. Because whatever we do, we need to promote good governance and accountability and transparency. So what part of this bill speaks to that? Okay, great, great. I'm glad we're getting to that. So disclosure of persons with significant control in companies. This is important. You saw the Institute of, of uh, Directors launching an ethics code just last weekend. So this is really, like you said, the pulse of it all. Um, more transparency in doing business restriction on multiple directorships in public companies. You're limited to about five companies, uh, being on the board of five companies at the most. We've also done quite a bit with insolvency so that any business that does have to fail can fail with dignity and not have, you know, creditors just caramelize the business. So you have business rescue provisions for insolvency companies, which is a big one for Nigeria because we hadn't had that before. And we also have minority shareholder protection and engagement. So those are the areas that really speak to a lot of transparency. There's several others like i said it's a gigantic uh, piece of legislation the largest one we have in the country but i'm trying to give the the key highlights that a uh, non-legal community um, would be particularly stimulated by um, smes and public companies have been pretty excited by these provisions they pushed for them we tried so hard and got as much as we could into it and, and we're going to keep working on it the National Assembly is engaged, the private sector is engaged. So this has been a long time coming. It's been three decades, as you mentioned, to the public. And we're definitely not going to let it be another three decades. You're, you're, ex you're <laughs> super excited, Dr. Jibako Duwale, because it makes your job a lot easier at the ease of doing business. Obviously. And I'm excited as a journalist yes. as well, having yes. followed this through over the last three decades. Yes. Thank you so much. Do have a great evening. Special advisor to the Nigerian president on ease of doing business Me and the too. head of yeah. the public secretariat.